Hello, I'm Bradley Vinson and welcome to Bradley Teaches. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up Keynote so you can create and edit graphics for your videos. All right, so today, as I said, I'm going to show you how to set up Keynote so you can edit graphics for your videos. And I'm going to show you how to set up a toolbar and show you how to set up some of your um, slide sizes so they are conducive to creating graphics. So let's go to Keynote. All right, so I have Keynote open here. And this is what I suggest you do start off with a white presentation. And there is a reason for that um, because Keynote, when you make a slide with zero fill, it turns it black. It doesn't have the little squares that you might see in some other applications that shows transparency. It actually turns it black. So when you start off with a presentation that's white and then go to no fill, it changes the color visually so then you then you will know right off hand that oh I made it transparent so that's why I always start off with a white presentation so I'm gonna click the white presentation and go to choose uh, here you'll see the default setup for keynote and how it's set up is really conducive to making presentations but we're not making presentations right now we're gonna create graphics so I have some toolbar suggestions that will help you as you create graphics, lower thirds, bugs, bars, sidebars, all those kind of things for your video application. So uh, follow me here. So we're going to go to View, Customize Toolbar. And the first thing I want to do is clean out all the stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to take off the Keynote Live button, Table button, Chart button, Comment button, and Collaborate button. So that gives us space now to add the things that I think we should add to make our toolbar more conducive to making graphics. So let's start off with the far left and go from there. I have my guides button. Then I go to object list. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add all of these and I'm going to tell you what they all do after we get them all in. Right. And we're going to add the add a slide button. The text button is already there, but I'm just going to slide it over. Uh, we're going to go to the fonts. Then we'll do shape and media. Put it right next to that one. Then I always have the color control button. Then group. And if you have a group, I want to also do ungroup. Then I have the forward and backward button. Then I have the mask button. And finally, the instant alpha button. And to the far right, you see the format, the animate, and the document buttons. We're going to leave those where they are. And now we're done. So if you click done, here's a thing that can be bothersome with Keynote, but it's actually good here. Now all those buttons are locked in and they are saved. Keynote auto saves what just happened. And whenever you open back up Keynote, all these buttons will be there. So now let's talk through what all these buttons do. And then I'll show you guys how to do some slide setups for making lower thirds and other graphics and things like that. So let's just start from the left and work our way across. The play button is good for you actually to play the slideshow that you create and actually to play the animation of the lower thirds that I'll be showing you how to do at some point, right? The guides button, now this only works if you have the rulers turned on. Unfortunately, there is no button to turn on the ruler, so you have to hit Apple or Control R to get the ruler. So I'll do that now. And the guides, you drag them from the rulers, right? So this will help you line things up and size different things and you can turn the guides on and off right the next is the object list so as you build uh, lower thirds you build your graphics you build sidebars with text and things like that 
you will want to have this object list because a lot of times if you just have a shape it'll just be called shape 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 and in the object window you can name different things by double clicking them and typing in a new name you can change the order of the items on how they are in the art in the uh, hierarchy what's on top of something else so that's just a good thing to have and I'll turn that back off for now for spacing add a slide is an obvious thing add a slide if you're gonna have animations that go between slides and I'll be showing you things that go with that through magic move and things you have your text box click it to add text you have your font so you can change your font window um, your fonts your bold your size and different things of that nature you have your shape box all right the media box is for adding things other than what you have from the shape box like music raster graphics graphics that um, are in different folders around your computer I usually drag and drop my graphics a lot so I rarely use the media button but it is there to kind of help you uh, find different things right uh, the colors control panel where you can just turn it on and off you don't have to go into the different formatting and things like that to find it now here's the thing let me delete this let's make another shape so grouping so select the items I usually drag across the items to select them group and now it's one item right and then ungroup undoes that so you select both of them click ungroup now they are individual items right and that's just good to have as you kind of put things together the forward and back as you see now the blue is in front you can hit backward now there is a all the way to the front and all the way to the back button that you can use I really don't use those I like clicking and having like that that ease control where I can just step back and step forward so that's why I use these two buttons for that this next the next two buttons are if you have raster graphics so say you bring in a JPEG picture of yourself or something like that and I think I have one somewhere oh, I thought I had one somewhere okay I'll bring in this graphic of an instructional sheet I did for my Memojis so here's a Memoji graphic and I'll use this let's bring it forward so it's on top so basically you can use the shapes that you have from your shape menu combined with the raster graphic to then make a mask so whatever's in the front will make a mask of what's in the back right so now I click off of that and that's the mask the graphic from a raster graphic that I use a um, shape on top of right so let me undo that and now something else you can do with raster graphics is you can do an instant alpha so you have the instant alpha box and this won't work good for what I'm using it for now but it's a color picker to make whatever color you pick transparent so if I click on that black the black becomes transparent and whatever's behind that will be able to be seen so you can use that I suggest using that when you have a, a logo that's a JPEG or something that you bring into Keynote that has a solid background you can use the alpha to click on that and make the background go away right so now let's kind of clean up this screen a little bit hit done on that let's clean all this stuff up get them off the screen so the those are the tools for the toolbox to help you set up keynote to make it more graphics creation and graphics editing friendly now I want to show you two more things that other people really don't show when they talk about making graphics or lower thirds or titles with Keynote the first thing is when you're making lower thirds usually your lower thirds don't take up the whole lower third of your screen right they're usually in the bottom left hand or right hand corner it's your name and your title and I'll be showing you in other videos how to animate and things like that but typically what happens uh, most people when they do these they make the animation on the lower third the size of the they use the whole slide here as your template and that mimics the size of your video screen I don't do that because wherever you make that graphic and let's just say the lower third 
gonna do a lower third down here and I'm not gonna animate it and all this stuff right now but this is the lower third and I'll put my name in it just so we can for context I'll just do BV alright so now that's my lower third but I'm using the whole screen to do it so now when I export this and I put it into my video application I'm it's locked there right because I'm using the full size of what the video screen would be to make a lower third I suggest against that what I usually do and what I teach others to do is to go into the document window which is the far right hand side and I'm gonna go to slide size custom size and I'm gonna make this the smallest feasible size that Kino will let you go for a wide screen which is what I've uh, established as 400 by 200 so now this is 400 by 200 and it actually resized the graphic too to make it that size so now you can make your lower third almost fill up the 400 by 200 right and the reason for this is now that your lower third is not locked into that bottom corner so now if I put it down here yes it's gonna have the little extra space above it or to the right but now my lower third is sizable and movable around my video screen and it's a lot a lot more freedom to what you're doing with it being that size I never use a full um, 16 by 9 ratio uh, full screen I usually build all my lower thirds in a 400 by 200 format and I usually even fill up most of this this size with my lower third so when I bring it in I can always resize it and move it around my video screen no problem the second thing I want to show you is when you're making what I call bugs or like the little icon graphics you see in the corner like you see in the bottom corner of my video right now for the Bradley teachers icon I create a custom size for that too usually what I do for that is I make those 200 by 200 and so now when I make my custom bugs and things like that this custom bug actually came from the arts I believe well let's just some of use the camera right so now I'll make this graphic fill up most of the 200 by 200 I'll edit it do all my different stuff and so now it doesn't really have much of a gutter around it I don't have to open up in another application to crop it none of that stuff and so now I can bring this graphic into my keynote not into my keynote into my video editing software and it's the right size and it can be size it can be moved around the screen freely without all the gutters and extra stuff that prevents it from moving if I did it on a full screen a full dimension slide so those are two things that are be that will be key to creating graphics and I'll go into another video so make sure you get your toolbar done to be prepared to start making videos start making graphics for your videos now I'm gonna also add something different that I'm gonna do with all my videos I'm gonna add PDF instruction sheets to go along with the videos that you can that you'll be able to get from the description if you look on the description right now you'll see a link to a PDF file that actually has all the icons from the toolbar that I just showed you how to build and descriptions of them and what they do that's just a little something extra I want to do for you so hopefully this will get you prepared and ready for the next videos coming up stick with me as I teach you more and more things on how to enhance your videos and have your videos be noticed in a good way so until next time, I am Bradley Vinson, Alana's Pawpaw. Be blessed, be free. See y'all next time.